All right, thanks for tuning in to another physics lesson with Mr. M. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to use Snell's Law to calculate the index of every fraction for an unknown material. So we take a look at our problem here. Um, we have light passing from air into an unknown material. Our angle of incidence is 43 degrees, and our angle of refraction is 28 degrees. We want to know what is the index of refraction. So the first thing is, let's start picking out some of the information that we know based on our problem. Well, we know we're going from air into that unknown material. We know our angle of incidence is 43 degrees, and our angle of refraction is 28 degrees. And we're trying to find the index of refraction of the unknown material. So as we take a look and start listing our known and unknown values for this problem, we know that we're going from air to our material. So air is our first material, and air always has an index of refraction of 1.0. We also know our angle of incidence, which is 43 degrees, and our angle of refraction, which is 28 degrees. Our unknown value in this case is N2. We take a look at the equation on the right here, N1 times sine of theta i equals N2 times sine of theta r. We're just gonna go ahead and start plugging in our values. So N1 is 1.0, times the sine of 43 degrees. That's going to equal our N2 that we don't know times the sine of 28 degrees. Now the biggest mistake that students make is that their calculator is not in degrees mode. It's in radians mode. So make sure when you do Snell's Law problems that, you are, you're, that your calculator is in degrees mode and not radians. So, since we want to solve for N2 here, we have to divide by the sine of 28 degrees on both sides. And then we can just go ahead and plug all of that into our calculator. So, 1 times the sine of 43 degrees divided by sine of 28 degrees. And that's going to give us our answer. So, in this case, N2 comes out to be 1.45, okay? And there's our final answer. So hopefully this video is helpful in helping you solve your own Snell's Law problem. Thanks for tuning in.